Hi guys, it's Doc Curry, and if you thought the CPI numbers were good, the PPI numbers were even better. But there are now concerns that the drop in inflation was temporary and we might go up again in August. In today's video, I'll explain why, so let's get into it! While the CPI in July increased 0% month over month, the PPI, that's the producer price index, actually fell 0.5% month over month. So this is a really good sign. This is the first actual indicator that there is no longer inflation, that it's actually deflationary. Now that said, it's still 9.8% year over year, but at least it was down month over month. And that would indicate that the CPI numbers might come down in August. But there is a problem. And that problem is beautifully summarized in this article here. Now, the biggest reason that inflation has come down is because of declining energy prices. And this article talks about whether the fall in gasoline prices, which is part of energy, can actually continue. Now, of course, the main reason that gasoline prices are dropping is because of the decline in oil prices. So what we really have to watch out for are commodity prices, especially oil. Now, WTI, that's an oil future, traded at $93.51 per barrel on Thursday, which was significantly lower than the $130 that it was at just a few months ago. And as you can see here on this chart, oil has been in a continual decline from those highs. So the question is, will commodity prices stay low? And experts say the relief might be short-lived. For one, while oil futures are far below their March peak, they have jumped more than 5% over the last week, and gasoline futures have gone up 10% over the last week. The president of Lipow Oil Associates said, the streak of daily declines in retail price of gasoline is about to end as crude oil and refined product futures have rallied off of their recent lows. And specifically talking about oil refineries, they are running on full capacity right now, trying to keep up with demand. And any sort of hurricane or other event that brings refineries offline could push gasoline prices up. In addition to that, the United States' historic release of barrels from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve will end this fall, which will take some of the supply off of the market and push prices up. Additionally, the SPR will need to be refilled, which will further increase demand and further cause prices to go up. There's also some concern that a reopening of the Chinese economy after these most recent COVID lockdowns could also boost demand and cause prices to go up. So in summary, while oil prices have been falling, they are starting to rise once again. And this is certainly causing some concern, especially when you consider the fact that it's not just oil, that other commodity prices are rising as well, including wheat and lumber. Lumber is up significantly over the past month. And as commodity prices rise, this increases the price that producers have to pay in order to manufacture goods and that ultimately will increase the price consumers have to pay which all in all just means inflation might have bottomed out and it's going to start going back up again. Now the latest CPI report did show that price pressures are easing because of falling energy prices. But just keep in mind that one month does not make a trend and with the global energy market still really tight, the relief of the pump could ultimately prove temporary. So don't get too excited about the CPI coming down in July. There's a chance that it was a one month drop and it might go up again in August. Also, keep in mind that when the Fed does their interest rate hike in September, the August CPI is going to come out before the Fed does their rate hike. So the Fed is actually going to have a chance to look at the August CPI in deciding how much of a rate hike to do. 
So if the August CPI does rise again and we do not start trending downward like everybody hopes we are, that could cause the Fed to have to raise interest rates a little bit higher or a little bit more than the markets are currently pricing in. So it might not be as rosy as it seemed. And I think that's why we saw a little bit of a decrease in the markets on Thursday, even after the PPI came out much better than expected. Now moving on to earnings, and we had one major earning announcement on Thursday, and that was Rivian. Rivian posted a second quarter revenue that beat estimates, but they expect a wider than expected loss for the year. They lowered their full year financial outlook, saying investors should expect a wider loss, and they should also expect Rivian to burn more cash than they had previously forecast. With those mixed earnings, Rivian was down 2% after hours. Okay, now let's get into something that I haven't talked about in a while on this channel, and that's crypto. Because Ethereum just had one of its biggest landmarks before they do Ethereum 2.0. And I want to talk about it because it's really going to affect crypto prices, well, especially Ethereum prices, over the next few weeks. Ethereum just pulled off its final test run ahead of one of the most important events in all of crypto. Ethereum is about to move to proof of stake, which we call Ethereum 2.0, which is less energy intensive than the existing proof of work method. It should lower cost, make the network faster, and as a result, Ethereum prices are skyrocketing going into this. And by the way, this was the last dress rehearsal before they officially do the upgrade. Now the upgrade is currently expected to take place next month. The exact timing of the upgrade was discussed at a meeting of Ethereum core developers on Thursday, but we don't have the actual guidance yet. Now previous guidance indicated the merge could go into effect sometime in mid-September. Just keep in mind that Ethereum's transaction has been repeatedly pushed back for the last several years now. Now regardless of when this actually does in fact take place, it is clear that this is a buy the hype, sell the news event. The price of Ether, which is the native token to the Ethereum blockchain, has been on an upswing in the past month, rising nearly 80%, including a gain of 10% just in the last 24 hours alone. Ethereum is back to around $1,875. However, it's still down about half this year. So it does look like Ethereum will continue to rise into the official launch or move over into proof of stake in Ethereum 2.0. And if that does in fact happen next month, we could expect Ethereum prices to continue to rise for another month. After that, though, it, I would not be surprised if Ethereum prices drop significantly in a classic buy the hype, sell the news event. All right, that's all the news that I have for you, and I am super excited for this da -da 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 announcement! The Moo Moo Millionaire Club Challenge is starting in just one week. That's right, we are one week away from officially starting the Moo Moo Millionaire Club Challenge. Of course, you don't have to use the Moo Moo platform. You can use any platform you want. I'm just calling it that because Moo Moo Millionaire kind of goes together. Anyway, uh, if you want to open your account and get it ready to go for this challenge, we are starting with $2,000. We're going to be depositing $200 every other week or $100 every week, however you want to do it. And over the next 10 to 15 years, we are going to be buying value stocks and getting this account up to a million dollars. The math works out. I looked at how Warren Buffett historically performed in their early years when they were able to buy a lot of small caps and micro caps. We looked at uh, how much value stocks go up. We looked at how we get a tremendous boost coming out of a bear market, and all of the math lines up, doing this uh, portfolio, we should be able to hit millionaire status in the next 10 to 15 years, which will help out a lot of you, especially if you're trying to retire or become financially free. 
That is what this challenge is about. Of course, the challenge is completely free. It is on YouTube. You don't have to sign up for anything or pay for anything. The entire challenge is free and open and available just by watching the YouTube videos. Now, if you want to get your account open and get some free stocks, Moo Moo is currently offering up to 10 free stocks. When you open an account and deposit $100, you're going to get uh, 10 free stocks if you open an account and deposit $2,000 and you're going to get six free stocks if you open an account and deposit $100. Now, you do have to use my link down in the description below to get that offer. If you don't use my link, then you only get one free stock. So make sure you use my link down in the description of this video in order to sign up for Moo Moo and get those free stocks. You have one week left to open your account and get it funded and ready to go for the Millionaire Club Challenge. And if you already have a Moomoo account, you can also open a Weeble account. Weeble is offering up to 12 free stocks. You get anywhere from 6 to 12 stocks with Weeble. It's kind of a lottery system. Some people get 6, some people get 7, 8, 9, 10, up to 12. And with Weeble, you just have to deposit $1 to take advantage of that promotion. Again, link for that is in the description of this video. And I also wanted to let you know that if you're not in the United States, Australia, or Singapore, those are the three countries that you have to be in in order to get Moomoo. If you're not in one of those three countries, then I recommend Interactive Brokers. Interactive Brokers is a highly discounted trading platform. They offer both options and stocks in over a hundred different countries, including Canada and the United Kingdom. I have a link for Interactive Brokers down in the description of this video as well. So no matter where you live in the world, you can take part in this challenge. Also, if you're in the United States and you want to use a Roth IRA for this challenge, you can do that because the $200 every two weeks puts us at $5,200 a year, which is just below the threshold limit for how much you can put into your Roth IRA each year. So again, that challenge is starting in one week. I am super excited to have you all join me on that. And I will see you guys on Monday for the next video. I hope you have a lot of success trading. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell icon if you're on YouTube. And I will see you on Monday.